Welcome to Specific Love. I love French cleats and as you can tell behind me, I have made hundreds of them to hold almost all of my tools. In fact, I have videos showing almost every one of these tool holders and I'll put a link to those in the description just in case you're interested. Now, one of the most common questions I have received in the process of making all these French cleats is what is the appropriate distance to put in between each of your cleats? Well, we hope to answer that question in this video. Let's get started. Now I'm going to compare three different spacing sizes. The first one is what I currently have in my shop, which is about five inches. The second will be what I currently have in my garage, which is about three inches of spacing. And last will be about 12 inches. Now whatever spacing you choose for your cleats, there is one thing that is consistent among all cleats. That is, whatever spacing you choose needs to be the spacing between every single cleat that you have on your wall. That will allow you to take a tool from one section up here and move it down to a section down here. And you don't have to worry about any clearance or any tolerances that might not fit. As long as it's spaced up here is the same as it is down here, it doesn't matter where you put your tools. Now to keep everything nice and spaced out, it's actually pretty simple. Measure everything out where you're going to have your cleats first. And then determine the spacing you want in between each. Then take the first cleat, which will actually be on the very bottom, install it on the wall, but make sure it is nice and level because you want to make sure everything is going to stay level and not slide off over time. So once you have that determined and in place, cut you out some spacers with just some wood and you want two of them, one on each side, and you can place the second cleat right on top of it. This will allow you to make sure the measurement in between those two and every other one will be exactly the same. Now let's look at the spacing in my workshop, which again is about five inches. Now this will allow me to put up a larger amount of my tools. For example, my clamps fit here nicely. I can still put stuff under it right here and still get them in place. I'm utilizing as much of the cleats as possible. There still are, for example, under these clamps here, some cleats that are not being utilized. So that's the determination you have to make whenever you're trying to figure out your spacing. Now on the cleats in my workshop, I have limited exactly how low I'm going with them. For example, this bottom cleat, it's about waist high, give or take, and that will allow me to still reach down and grab tools, but I can take some of the larger holders and I can put them on this bottom section and it'll allow me to utilize a lot more of the cleats that are higher up, specifically for the tools that are much smaller. Now let's look at the three inch spacing in my garage. I originally built this for smaller objects, for small little holders, but unfortunately, of course, I've transitioned to my larger tool holders out to this as well. For example, this shelf here, if you look at it right here, it only utilizes one cleat to hold it up, but it's taking the space of almost four of the cleats. That's a bunch of wasted space behind it. If I had wider spacing, I'd have less cleats here, and I wouldn't feel as bad about that. Now, when the smaller holders, for example, like this, that works great with the smaller cleats because you only need to utilize that one cleat for it. But any of the larger items, this causes a problem. So for any time you want to use the smaller, closer spacing, I suggest that it's only going to be for really small tools or small objects. And that way, you're not limiting yourself. Otherwise, stick with a little bit larger. Now, if you ever considered large spacing between your cleats, keep in mind this is good for large objects, large tools, maybe a lumber rack or a large blower or whatever that's going to be large and taking up big space. Or maybe even like a dolly or drying racks like I have right here. You can easily put cleats on it and hang them on your wall out of the way. This right here is good for large objects, but there is a limitation. Let me show you. Now, when you have the cleats that are really far apart, there's something else you have to remember. When you're dealing with large tools or heavy tools, things like this, it's going to want to pivot downward a good bit. And without that extra cleat down below it, there's a very good chance that it's going to want to put a lot of pressure right on the tip here, right on the edge of your cleat, not only on the back of your tool, but actually on the wall itself. So if you notice on the back of this setup here, I actually have another piece of wood. It is not a cleat, it's just a solid piece of wood. And while this is hanging from the cleat, this brace here is actually going to put pressure against the wall. So it'll limit that twisting action and thus have it allow it to have a very, very good connection with the cleat. Now one of the advantages of having your cleats a little bit closer together, as you can see here, this holder is actually braced against this cleat and therefore it doesn't need that additional piece of wood to hold it nice and sturdy. And here's a second example of that same concept. So let's get back to the original question. What is the appropriate distance you need to have in between your cleats? Well, there are a lot of variables we need to look at right before we make that decision. First off, how big is your shop and how much wall space do you have available? Secondly, how many tools do you have and how many of those do you plan on hanging on the wall? 
And number three is what are your plans for the shop and are there any chances you might expand further in the future? Now once you determine the answers to those questions, it's a lot easier to figure out the spacing you need for your tools. Now in my shop, I still love the five to six inch spacing. That allows me to have a bunch of tools up on the wall, but still allows me to utilize most of those cleats without having a bunch of those empty. Now any kind of system, any kind of cleat setup that you're gonna have up in your walls, I guarantee you, unless you sit down and design every single tool holder before you even start, you're gonna have some cleats up there that are not gonna be utilized. So just keep that in mind. Also remember that if you have your cleats too close together, you're definitely gonna be wasting a lot of them. And if you have them too far apart, you're gonna have to you know, design your tool holders to be able to have additional bracing on each one. Unless, and only unless you're you know, attaching very, very large tools that are reached in between the cleats. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is a bunch of information that will allow you to be able to determine which cleats will be appropriate in your workshop. So get out in your shop and have fun building.